Hi friends and welcome to Bimini. I am on probably the coolest sailboat skiff conversion. Did I mention it's a budget DIY boat? Yeah, the boat I'm on that I brought to the Bahamas cost me less than $2,000 to build. Buying the boat, buying the motor, putting it together. So in this video, we're coming here to help my buddy Jonah do some fiberglass work on his boat. FGCI hooked up some great stuff for him. We're gonna explore a little bit and yeah, we're in the Bahamas. Tell me how crazy this is. A one, a one fifteen on a sailboat. Yeah, how many times have you seen a hundred fifteen horsepower on a sailboat? All right, I got the wire harness hooked up and now I'm hooking up the shift and throttle linkage, cable shifter. Um, I'm just changing these cables. Needed something a little bit longer. So I'm gonna put this together and get it mounted and fire it up. All right, so I've got my foam piece cut out. I, I shaped it. Everything's ground down here. I wanted to make sure that I got to fresh glass. So you always, if you're gonna do fiberglass work, you always wanna grind down to bare fiberglass. So that's what I've got going on here. So I'm gonna cut out my fiberglass. I'm gonna use the FGCI um, GP polyester bonding putty and I'm gonna basically do a wipe, almost treat it like Bondo, coat this area, fit in the little cracks, and then I'm gonna laminate wet on wet right over it. So, let's do it. One of the biggest announcements for this coming season of videos is that I have partnered with FGCI. FGCI is Fiberglass Coatings Inc. They're a company that provides number one, incredible customer service and knowledge, number two, a phenomenal product, and number three, incredible value. If you've watched some of my past builds and videos, you'll see that I already incorporate FGCI products. I've been putting them to the test and I am absolutely in love with their products. I can't wait to share with you some of the upcoming videos of projects we've already done. So one of the most important parts of my partnership with FGCI is that they jumped on board at some of the ideas I had for this year, creating some incredible projects and helping Bahamians with their hurricane damage boats. And also to partner up with you guys, it's my probably biggest announcement for this season is that I want to help you build your skiffs and projects. FGCI is on board. They're making these videos possible. They are providing the support and phenomenal products to help you work on your dream skiff. So if you're interested in having your boat worked on here at DIY Waterworld, me helping you and FGCI backing us up, let me know in comments. My email is diywaterworld at gmail.com. I'm all about supporting good business. There's an old saying that I pretty much have lived by, support those that support you. You can implement that to any part of your life, whether it's friends, family, um, but especially business. And FGCI has really stepped forward to help with these builds and projects. They want to see this channel grow and they wanna see you grow. They wanna see you tackle your DIY projects. And I couldn't be more excited. When I started this channel, I had a couple dream partners that I'd love to work with. And one of them happened to be a fiberglass supplier and it is FGCI. So I could not be happier to make this announcement to share with you guys FGCI. I've got a link in the description of this video to their website. And let me tell you what, support them because they support you. They support this channel. They support the builds. And you know what? We have so much good stuff coming from FGCI. I'm really excited to share, and I hope that you show them some love as well. On with the video! All right, so you guys can thank Travis for this one. 
gave me the kick in the butt to lay everything out. So this is a majority of what gets packed um, before a Bahamas crossing. So this is just gonna be a little bit, actually it's not that much extra than what I bring on the little skiffs. A lot of you have wanted to know what I take with me. It seems like it's a full send on my crossings, but it really, it is, but it isn't. So we're gonna do a quick walkthrough to see all this stuff. I'm gonna show you what it is that I'm bringing. And yeah, so let's do it. All right, so in here, this is Buddies at FGCI, they hooked it up for Jonah. So I've got everything needed for fiberglass repair in here. Got a grinder, I've got discs, rollers, buckets. The very bottom is a bunch of fiberglass. We got a gallon of resin. That's your kit, Jonah. So we're gonna do some repairs on Jonah's skiff. Over here, this is electrical. So, I've got a lot of basic connectors and stuff in here, but also underneath some spare wiring, my first aid kit, I got a little inverter. Let's see what else. Um, you know, miscellaneous electrical stuff that would be needed, could be needed. I have to wire a different bilge pump. Got a spare bilge pump. So electrical, this is tools. So on the tools, hey, there's a spare bilge pump. Must have. This is like an emergency epoxy putty stick. And this can be used to, you know, underwater. I've used this before on different boats, works awesome. Of course, some 5200. And then an assortment of hand tools, basically everything I would need to do any minor motor repairs. We've got my little temperature gun. I can check engine temperature if I feel like the engine might be overheating. Um, do a nice check in the middle. I got my little JB weld. But there's more than enough tools in this kit. I could probably take an entire motor apart. Um, everything except for pull the flywheel with that kit. Oh, did I mention I found this toolbox in a dumpster? We got fuel tanks. This will be reserve fuel. Two stroke oil, plenty. Got enough to do a hundred gallons of mixed fuel, which is more than enough. Gotta have the Dawn dish soap. Life isn't complete without it. Keep everything clean. So I've got an electrical bin, mechanical bin. This is the fuel bag. I've got spare fuel filter lines, primer balls, ends, spark plugs, two sets of spark plugs. I've already gapped them, they're ready. Um, water fuel separators, two water fuel separators. So this is more than enough, not too heavy. Um, then we've got my dry bag. This is just clothes. Yay. Close in here. Um, this is my little lithium battery bag. So I'll bring a couple of these batteries. These are 20 amp hour. These are little workhorses for me. I can run a navigation system on this. Um, so if I lose the charging ability, I can actually use this as a jump pack as well. But 20 amp hours, I can run all night long. Um, one of my little fans, 12 volt fans, easily. I can charge phone. I can do pretty much run anything I need off those. So I'm gonna bring two of these, they're super lightweight. So I've got spare props. So these are being rehubbed. These are for the 2535. And then I've got uh, a stainless prop for a backup on the big motor. Um, I've got spare cotter pins, washers, thrust washer for those. This is my little inflatable float. This is like a little beach beach rig, but if something happened, um, the boat won't sink, but I've got this little, uh, if the boat caught fire, um, I do have a fire extinguisher, but if something happened or I was having to abandon ship and I was in the water, I've got this um, and my ditch bag, my fins, everything can go right in this basket, uh, my handheld VHS, and uh, yeah, this is what I would swim with. 
and it works easily collapsible. Lines, bilge pump. Dive bag, fins, mask, basics, flying sling. Gotta eat. So we just dropped the boat in the water. Travis took off. He's getting the other trailer. We're gonna put it on that trailer. It's a bit more roadworthy. And then we're gonna head to Miami. The only other thing we have to do is load the kicker motor. It's gonna be easier to do it right now. So I've got that in the Honda. I'm gonna unload it, rock and roll. About 6.15, 6.20, getting underway. Just had a so-so night's sleep. I got this new Garmin fuel flow sensor. I was up to like 11.30 last night trying to connect it to my Garmin. Anyways, apparently, nowhere in the instructions does it tell you you have to buy this, uh, this package update software. So I unfortunately could not connect my fuel flow sensor to my Garmin. Kind of a, a letdown. I was really looking forward to calculating and just looking at fuel economy. So anyhow, I've been leaving Miami. This is government cut. Um, the weather looks really, really good this morning. So hopefully uh, all goes well. And, uh, just move along, you know. Um, that's a pogo coming our way. So let's see. Okay, well, <laughs> channel's closed for security reasons. When two or more cruise ships come through, um, they close the channel. So now I'm going to have to loop around and hopefully find an alternative way to go around. So. No problem. So, time for first fuel up. Only about 10 miles out of Miami, so. <laughs> no! I was really hoping I'd get better mileage at this cruising speed of around 19 miles an hour. So, I've already burned up, you know, probably five gallons, a little over five gallons. So, two miles per gallon. I only got about 35 gallons with me. So, I'm gonna try to maintain a good cruising speed at least to get through the push of the Gulf Stream and then uh, you know if I have to cut back to a slower speed to conserve fuel I'll do that um, so time to fuel up so I've got a bunch of five gallon jugs that I've already pre-mixed and uh, or mixed I don't know why they call it pre-mix so 
I'll just start working through them and I use them as ballast throughout the boat. So I'm gonna fuel up and get back to it. I'd like to take a moment to thank you for watching this video. If this is your first time watching, welcome to the channel and I hope you check out some of our builds and past adventures. And for those of you that are returning and subscribed, you guys know I appreciate you so much. I appreciate all you guys, all of your love for the channel. Uh, you guys, your comments are, I, I sound like a broken record, but your comments are next level. Your likes, your subscriptions, I do these videos for you and I am so excited about this new direction that the channel is headed. I'm gonna continue with builds as always, but I'm also gonna be incorporating more adventure and a little bit more how-to, which was what you guys wanted to see. So here we go, let's do this. All right, just finished fuel up number three. Yeah, three. All right, so Fill up number four, been through three tanks, probably traveled uh, almost 40 miles. Um, we're definitely over halfway. I think we're showing 19 miles. Um, so we're getting there, over halfway. Um, it's crazy. I just finished doing a video. If you haven't seen the video, I got a video where I tested, tried to go for the ultimate miles per gallon, 20, I'm not even gonna tell you how many miles per gallon I got, but I did a skiff and oh, to go from a super efficient skiff to this boat and this motor, this motor likes to drink, holy moly. So I'm definitely going through a ton of fuel, you know, in my mind, because I'm used to not using much, but I always like to stop out here anyhow in the middle of the Gulf Stream and just kind of take it all in, you know, and you can't see land anywhere around you a big ship out there um you know it's it's humbling i've said it in some of my past crossing videos where i cross the bahamas in little skiffs it doesn't matter what size boat you're in when you're out here and you stop in the middle of the gulf stream and just turn the motor off and just be present it's pretty it's a vulnerable and amazing feeling to be out here it really uh i love thinking about the the explorers back in the day you know how crazy we got gps and satellite phones and all these communications and you know we complain about it but i don't complain about it all right philip done time to get back on the road <laughs> We're getting close. This is gonna be our last fill up. You can see land, I've seen land for a minute. Let's see if I can show you. Oh man. Nine miles away. So, I'm gonna do this last bit of fill up and can't wait to show you guys this water. This water is spectacular. Oh, I love this place. I swear, every time I come to Bimini, it's like the first time decades ago. Goosebumps. I'm telling you, it never gets old. The best part is coming up. We're about to hit the crystal clear water. <laughs> oh, man. All right, so my favorite part of bringing new people to Bimini, which is you guys, is the first time you lay eyes on this water. There's something completely magical about the Bimini water. Um, people call it Bimini blue. Some people say Exuma's got the best water in the Bahamas and I say, no, 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 not today. Bimini, baby. Let's check out this water. You guys are in for a treat. There is no editing, no filters. I'm going the way it records is what you're gonna see. <laughs> Have you ever seen water so amazing in your entire life? No way. Look at this. <laughs> so I've been coming to Bimini for decades now. Yes, yeah, since my very first trip with my best buddy Georgie and his family. This never gets old. Look at this. 
So I'm gonna take you guys to some of my favorite spots in Bimini. I'm gonna show you the stuff that everybody sees and I'm gonna show you stuff that nobody sees. All right, so here we go. First exploration trip. I'm leaving North Bimini. I'm gonna slowly make my way up the coast. And my goal is to go to the north end, the very tip. I've been dying to explore this area of North Bimini. So even though I've been coming here for 30 plus years, I've never really stopped, anchored, and spent time on the North North Beach. So I wanna do some, some uh, exploring. I wanna do a little beach combing, kinda see what I see. So I'm pretty excited to explore it. I might have to get out, trim the motor up, walk the boat too, but it's gonna be a pretty cool spot to just explore, spend the night, and just see what happens. Right, here I am, the very north end of Bimini. This all has been filled in. All this construction, this all used to be mangroves. That's a whole nother video within itself of the construction and how they've just gone so far north. It's pretty sad, but anyhow, we're getting to the very north end. It's uninhabited. We're gonna swing around this bend and Within a couple miles is a really amazing spot. So, we're close. I've got this sandbar here. A little skinny to try to get through, but I think I turn the motor off, trim it up, float right through. Let's try it. Oh, there we go. Motor off. Trim it up. It's trimmed up. We're floating. We might make it. Oh, gosh. I'm gonna have to hop in. Yes. Yes. How many boats can you camp on comfortably, explore across the Gulf Stream, and explore, you know, how shallow, how shallow it is here. This is absolutely what a good expedition vessel should be able to do is this right here. Wow. So cool. Is that the anchor? We'll explore. All right. So here we go. Time to explore. See what we find. So I've got a little list. The list is I need shade. So I do have a sail cover that I found. 
But one of the things I'm looking for is some sort of a post stick and uh, maybe some netting material. I'd like to do a couple hanging shelves, um, you know, like basket shelves. So, go um, rock the beach. See what we see. Find what we find. I got my my sandals. Always a must. So you can see this tree line. There's a big gap in tree line, which should mean some water. So let's go for a little. Oh God, yeah. Looks like I step up here. What? I mean, I knew this creek existed. I didn't know how close I was. You can tell there was a little fire back here at some point. Let's go see what... Oh man, this creek. So these kind of creeks are uh, little estuaries where just tons of juvenile fish and marine life grow up. This is what I'm debating taking the boat through to cut through. Holy crap, this is amazing. Wow. Look at this. Holy moly. So that pretty much dumps back out to the beach, which is only, what, 100 feet that way. So we're at dead low tide, basically. So really the one thing I wanted to scout was, can that boat, 26 foot boat, um, I know people bring little skiffs through here when it's high tide, but I mean, just looking, <laughs> I mean, you know, I'm gonna give it a try, right? That's the worst thing that can happen. Wow, this is so cool. God, this is so cool back there. It's so quiet. I love the sound of the wind through these uh, casarina trees, these Australian pines. They just like. Whoosh. I should try to record some sound of that. You guys come back here and clean conk. Somebody forgot their sunglasses. Oh man. What? What? I can't see out of them, but I mean, they kind of work. Okay. Executive decision. It is possible to bring the McGregor skiff through here. I know it's not a skiff, it's a sailboat, but it's a skiff to me now. It's a flat bottom, it's no longer a sailboat. It does look a little shallow way up here towards the entrance, <clears throat> which makes sense because that's where waves and stuff wash up sand. So probably exposed sand, but we're at dead low tide. So when the tide comes up, that's gonna give plenty of depth I mean, a lot of this is all this darker green. I'm going to climb up a tree. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to climb up a tree and give you a better point of view. Hopefully I don't fall and bust my butt. <laughs> okay, when you don't have a drone, you improvise. Old school. So I'm up in a tree. And I actually see the ocean across. <laughs> I want you to get a good point of view. Look at this. So I can get a better point of view of where I want to loop around. So coming through here, I just wanted to see. I just wanted to show you guys what it's like. This that's the entrance. So we're gonna walk out to the entrance shortly. 
scout that. Let's see if you can see the ocean over there. You can kind of see the ocean through the tree line. Just making my way to the mouth of this creek. I switched over to the beach side. Just getting an idea of where I'll have to go to cut in. And I'm scavenging. So from here you can see the creek side and the ocean side. The boat's way over there. And here's the creek. Right behind us is the bend. Or the inlet, the mouth. I don't know what it's called. All right, so I'm gonna say this is not even a mile distance. Check out what I found. Number one, some cool driftwood. I love driftwood. Um, here's one piece. Check out this piece, this one's pretty cool. Kind of do some funky things with that. I don't know, that would be cool standing on a nightstand or something. This score in this ring buoy. I don't know what the hell I'll ever do with it, but it floats. Crate. I've needed a crate. I know the exact spot for it. And I ended up finding two of these little buoys. Kind of like a dense foam. These are good for like marking a spot, having a little weight on a long, thin piece of rope, tossing it overboard if you want to mark something. Um, yeah, pretty good little score for a little walk, huh? And I'm looking at, blah, I'm looking at miles of beach. So what I'm going to do is go get the boat, kind of see it. And these flies are ruthless. Get the boat, the tide's coming up. I'm going to bring it up and probably just bring it right into this little cove here um yeah i want to i don't know maybe i don't go that close the wind is going to shift so i'll probably end up anchoring just out here that way i don't worry about bugs and stuff tonight so yeah let's keep exploring All right, so mission accomplished. The one thing I wanted more than anything was to get some fairly straight pieces so I can build my little shade canopy. So here we go. That's some pretty, really solid pieces. So I'm gonna rinse these off, take them to the boat, let them dry and then move the boat. The tide's already coming up. So I'm gonna fire up the boat. Move farther north. Here we're going skinny. This is it. No problem. I mean, we're like in a foot, foot and a half of water. So cool. I love, love exploring little bites, creeks like this. Oh, so cool. Well, friends, that concludes this video. I'd like to take this moment to thank you so much for all of your channel love, your likes, your subscriptions, your comments. And I enjoy so much the feedback that you share with me. So until next time, thank you so much and I'll see you soon.